What's going on guys? Maverick Mark here and I'm bringing you the latest and greatest in Division 2 news. Today we are going to talk about the DPS glitch. And you might ask, what new DPS glitch? Well, um, it's safe to say that as far as I know there are no new DPS glitches. The DPS glitch that I'm referring to is the March 2020 DPS glitch. So you might be thinking, why are we talking about something that happened in March? Well, we're happy to be talking about it because basically everything that has transpired since March has led us to this moment. We have seemingly cheaters running the raid. Uh, we have huge sweeping DPS increases across the board in almost all weapons through patch 10.0. And I feel like all of this comes from the DPS glitch. So if you want to jump back in time with me to, you know, early March, into February, early March, you know, Warlords of New York is, you know, it's fresh, it's hot, and it is blowing people away. It's the most beautiful thing anybody's ever seen. Ask anybody at that time. Meanwhile, it's not really that pretty. Um, I feel like they've done better. The story was extremely gripping. I loved the story. Do I feel like they wasted some characters? Yes. But was it amazing? Yes. That story mode was straight amazing. But anyway, so here's where we go from there. Quickly after leaving story mode, you jumped into maybe a hard mode and already we knew in our head from the state of the games that the best gear was going to come from Heroic. It wasn't going to come from Challenge, and it wasn't going to come from, you know, hard mode. And for most people, Challenge mode was nothing. We had been breezing through Heroics, zero problems for the last six months. So now we jump into a Heroic, and a Heroic takes two and a half hours. Everybody's like, pump the brakes, guys. What the crap is happening? Two and a half hours for a heroic? That's retarded. Straight retarded, man. I don't know what's happening. Challenge mode is taking 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes. And you've got these other guys that are standing there saying, no, 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 guys. No, no, no. You're not doing it right. All right, so now instead of you having any armor or any skill power or anything like that, you run all reds and you get the job done. So there was a challenge there where you had to sweep what you knew under the rug, tuck it away, maybe to be brought out at another time. But right now, we're running straight damage builds, you know, with a little status effects peppered in there. You know, some blinds, some, uh, you know, you know, just a little peppering, a little sprinkling on there. So... That turned out to be garbage because what eventually happened was a DPS exploit was found where you could just basically amplify your weapon damage to a turret, or with a turret, I should say. And I'm sure you can Google still or YouTube, and there's still a million videos showing all this. All right, so where that left us was you had these overly overly tanky enemies you had very little damage you had one gun one gun the fabled m1a and all its wooden steel glory that's just punching holes in enemies left and right basically you either got a really good one and you could make it through content or you were like most people and you never found quite the right thing that you wanted and you had to struggle your living butt off trying to get through challenge mode and I didn't understand any of this was happening I happened to be one of the lucky ones I got a god rolled baker's dozen from the you know from the season tier season reward and I was just rolling in loot at that point the loot wasn't any good I mean, it was, quite frankly, terrible. Even in Heroic, you know, it still took 
40 minutes with a really good team. It still took 40 minutes, and you might come away with one piece of loot, you know. All right, so then, you know, this DPS, the DPS glitch basically runs rampant. And anybody that says, oh, I didn't use it, probably lying. I simply did not use it because I was actually worried about having my account banned. I was a fresh startup on the YouTube scene, and I figured the last thing I needed was my, you know, my account being banned or having a 14-day ban and having all my stuff taken from me, all because I did this damage glitch. And essentially, I just struggled through. Now, I watched a few videos where guys were farming loot, um, I made a couple of videos about that just because the loot at the time was straight garbage and we needed to move on from that. So there was a massive sweeping ban that was unleashed upon all of us. You know, everybody had the fear of being banned and a lot of players did indeed get banned. So a few people... the. The misinterpretation of the ban was is that all the guilty people, you know, were knocked out. Was just simply not true. It was simply not true. Um, Marco Style, and the only reason why I mention him here is because he's the only person I've seen on Twitter that has come out and said, yeah, I did this, and I did this, and I had this, and boom, I don't care. Because essentially... He doesn't care. I watched his video where he jumped ship over into the Destiny 2 world. And I gotta say, if that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. Alright. Do I, you know, and that's it. So, here we are. All these people get banned. And they get their accounts rolled back 14 days. You know, the game is in a terrible state of overly tanky enemies and skills being kind of worthless, armor being absolutely worthless, and you basically run an M1A all red DPS build. You know, there's a few there's a few guys that could get away with running a machine gun build that was really strong, but essentially you had to have a couple of, you know, three or four pieces of gear or you were not making progress. At least not adequate progress. So... If you flash forward to where we are now, all right, patch 10.0 comes out, and you're like, well, why did patch 10.0 come out? Well, it's because, you know, there were the, all the, why are we getting all these sweeping changes? Well, we're getting these changes because the game was absolute garbage. There was no reason to play for a lot of people, and a lot of people dropped off. The SHD levels that people were farming just they were just terrible. It's just a grind and grinding something that isn't fun, not a lot of people are going to do. I mean, I got to admit, my playtime drastically reduced and most of the guys that I play with absolute they I mean they've just quit. They just absolutely went somewhere else. So that being said, tap, patch 10.0. Now we we did have a few patches sprinkled in there here and there where we got small buffs, and some things got changed around. Most notably, skills received this huge buff. Just this absolutely huge, huge buff. And then, right on up to patch 10.0. Alright, 10.0, you got these sweeping DPS increases. And, in all honesty, they need to go back, and they need to apologize to all these people that... Are basically saying like, well, we got banned for DPS glitching when all we really did was make the game kind of fun. Now, they cheated, so technically they deserve their ban. That being said, now though in patch 10.0, like, they made all the changes we were asking for in the first place. So really, did they deserve the ban? Who knows? Who really knows? Now, Operation Iron Horse drops, and we have a whole new set of controversy. All right, so we're going to go back. 
Operation Iron Horse, which was supposed to be out in November of last year. I mean, we're only like nine months behind, guys. I mean, come on. What's the fuss about there? I mean, really. Everybody knows being nine months behind on a project would totally, you know, go over at your job. Flash forward now, and we do what we did during the first raid, and we have this launch event where, you know, the streamers, the guys that have the luxury of being able to play for a living, uh, they're going to jump in there, and they're going to whip this thing's butt, and they're going to see show you just how fast they can do it, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Well, it all goes down. A team finishes on PC, of course, first, because Lord knows Massive is not going to optimize this game for both console and PC. It's just not going to happen. You get in one game, and that's it, folks. You're not getting, you know, a console version where headshots, you know, aren't going to be as important as body shots or crit damage because cons- controllers are just as accurate. You don't understand. That's all I hear is how accurate controllers are, except for the guys that play on PC. They're like, mm, I don't think so. Anyway, so now we've got these guys a day after. And they're like, hey, so, uh, yeah, so we completed the raid in like 11 and a half hours. Um, We kind of cheated. And you're like, what? Like, I remember sitting there at work reading all the tweets going, what are they talking about? How did you cheat? I mean, we watched you raid. We, We saw all the things. How on earth would you cheat when we saw you? It's like, oh, well, we had this little, you know, set of papers that we're not going to tell you where they came from or, you know, who gave them to us or, you know, if they were even accurate. It's like, oh, wait, yeah, we are. Here's what they are. They had multiple layers of papers that explained boss mechanics the only thing most of these groups had to do was just make sure they did it correctly. You know, the the order that it needed to be done in. So, you have this blazing fast raid time that, you know, probably should have... It probably would have taken normal teams without anything. I don't know. Maybe 20 hours? I don't know. Who knows? But now you have to sit there and think, is this tarnished? Is this what we wanted? I mean, I personally did not have a stake in the race. I I don't care a thing in the world about Division Two rating. So far, it has it's basically just a jumbled up mess with artificially uh, artificial ceilings that make you think you're not good at the game anymore. All because you know. They created this raid that they want like 5% of the entire player base to actually finish. Whatever. And maybe that's how it should be. But you, there is no reason to actually go into the raid because it's not like you're getting this awesome, amazing gear that you aren't going to just be able to get like two months later when they release it into the regular loot pool. Oh yeah, not to mention... Oh, oh no, 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 no. Let, don't let me forget... You can actually get the blueprints to some of the gear because, you know, crafting gear is so great right now. It's so in right now. You know what I'm saying? That's not a real thing. That is not a real thing. So, basically, you're, what are we, are we going to ban these guys? I mean, because they had possibly data mined information or more than likely someone at Massive handed this information off to the big streamers because, you know, it's in their best interest to do that thing. You know, like, what are we doing here? Like, is is this where we go? Because, you know, we want this game to succeed. We make sure the streamers can finish this raid, make sure it doesn't look incredibly difficult for your average player. Your average player doesn't look at it and say, screw this, I ain't doing this. And I think that's exactly where we're left. 
is that nobody wants to do this. Nobody wants to sit there and grind this thing out for 11 or 12 hours. I remember raiding in World of Warcraft where you'd come in and you would raid for like mm, five, six, seven hours a night and it would take you know these absurdly long dungeons that would take multiple days to complete. You'd raid three days totaling 15 hours a week and you hope it by, you know, you'd, you'd power creep up to the point where you would blaze through the first 10 bosses and then the last five were your trouble spots. And you'd have to really sit down and focus and to get through them. And eventually you got all this amazing loot. None of that happens here. None of these fights are like World of Warcraft. We're just sitting there, and we're just experiencing it, and it's just something a little bit different, a little something new. They don't even take the time to explain the boss mechanics. They just willy-nilly toss them out there to us and say, hey, this is the mechanics. Learn them right here. Meanwhile, most of your other experienced raiding games that have raids and have these long, drawn-out fights... You know, they explain raid mechanics in a more meaningful way that you can actually see what's happening. So that when you get there, you're not just like, oh, well this guy deals a AoE pulse that can one-shot you and he's wearing body armor that is infinite, but he's not wearing anything on his head once you destroy his backpack that pulses and kills you instantly. But anyway, guys, I'm going to draw this to a close there. What I really want to see is that they just take a step back from this. I want to see more general content to the entire pool, not just raids. The raid is basically, if, if raid were new content released, it would be 10 hours worth of content. You would say, well, 10 hours for free. Let's remember that the first raid was was able to be completed in 40 minutes 40 minutes now do i think the second raid is going to be anywhere near that maybe not maybe not but we'll see so for and this isn't this isn't free content by the way this is content that we should have gotten in the year one pass and we did not get it all right so That being said, I'm drawing this video to a close, and I'm leaving you to think on that. Where do you want The Division 2 to go in year two? All right. So far, seasonal changes are not that good. The loot's not that good, and we're, I mean, we're losing players like, you know, they're they're just falling off like flies. But guys, please think on this. I... I really would like to hear what you have to say in the comments. So post up, guys. Post up. Anyway, guys, I've been the Maverick, and I'm out.